You know, in the 1750s, King George III wrote an essay condemning slavery. This was a full 50 years before the abolition of the slave trade. Que uh, Queen Victoria, his uh, uh, granddaughter, was in, in, uh, very well known for her warm reception towards the Muslim community, towards Maharaja Dilip Singh, as you know, of the, the Sikh empire. Uh, her son, Edward VII, very famous for his positive attitudes towards the Jews, raising anti-Semitism with the Tsar of, of Russia. Empire and slavery are universal elements. Every country in the world has experienced slavery. The African empire, there were numerous cases in Africa of the slave trade but, but that doesn't existing. Mean that we Why shouldn't that mean be that doing Britain something that, about it today. I think enough has been done. But I, what I would like to see from people in, in who are advancing this desire for an apology is why aren't they also looking to Nigeria and asking Nigeria to apologize? How about Benin? Why doesn't Benin apologize? Because European slave traders weren't going into inland to get slaves. They were get, getting slaves that were sold to them by other Africans. You know, Donald Duke, who was the governor of Calabar, a uh, presidential candidate in the 2019 Nigerian election said that my ancestors were involved in selling slaves, but I wasn't involved with that, so why should I apologise? I think uh, we Angelina, need to move on. What, what, I mean, what, what do you make of that? And do Commonwealth countries feel that the British monarchy and, and that Britain should be talking about reparations? Um, certainly, I think that this work has been going on for as long as there's been, since the, the, the 18th century, OK, in different manifestations. I think the idea that um, the royal family and the British government, successive governments, do not take responsibility for transatlantic enslavement is, I think, is a little bit disingenuous. I don't fully share the views of the last gentleman who just spoke. Um, you know that slavery was, was supported by government and political structures. Slavery could not have happened without royal charters. Um, slavery, in terms of the Royal African Company, for example, was established by Charles II and his brother, the Duke of York. So we know that, that, these, that, that they definitely profited from the trade and trafficking in African people. We know that Jamaica, for example, was literally the jewel in, in Britain's crown during this period. You know, it was the richest uh, enslavement colony that Britain had. And so we need to need to bear that in mind, okay? Is, we is, this need directly, to... is this the direct reason why countries like Jamaica and Barbados are now seeking to um, not have the Queen as their head of state? It may be. It also may be everything that's also happened in recent years. It may have something to do with what was happening, has been happening and continues to happen around the Windrush scandal. OK, so the Windrush scandal is something that we've been aware of only in the last four years. But certainly these countries would have been conscious of the amount of people who have been deported incorrectly back to Barbados, Jamaica and other Caribbean countries for some time now. And perhaps it might be the idea of there being um, a not, um, lack of acknowledgement or acceptance of what's been happening might be another reason, reason why people uh, are... are are angry and upset and want things to change. You know, you know, when people came over here in the 1940s, there was this kind of compact where people were invited because they were British subjects. And there had been a sort of really kind of, this, and a lack of really sort of respect around those ideas and the continuous um, furore around immigration, immigration policy. I imagine many of these Caribbean countries are quite frustrated about. Also, I think we have to factor into what had happened in 2020 with George Floyd and this idea about reckoning around racial injustice. I mean, I, the, the, I mean, the conversation about uh, uh, racial attitudes and it, is it, huge. But on the subject of Windrush, Windrush is a, it was a, you know a, a, a huge issue for British politics. And uh, how it, has that impacted? Well, it was a huge issue on, on British politics. But let's take this further. I, I'm curious to know why the Caribbean are coming late to the Republican Party when the African states started going republic and ditching the Queen way back in the 1950s. Uh, you look well, at... Why do you, think, why do you think they're doing it now? Um, I don't know why, that, why they're doing it now. I mean, Jamaica's had 60 years to decide whether it wants to... Be, 
become a republic or not. It's now decided. Well, is it, it's is it a to... generational thing? Perhaps younger people are maybe, quite maybe it is so gener... enamoured of the royal family maybe, as the it, older generation. Maybe it is a generational thing. The thing is that, uh, as far as the Queen is concerned, she's pragmatic. She said so, so much in so many words in Australia in 2000, after the Australian referendum, when it went to the monarchy, instead of going uh, a, a republic, that it is for the people to decide. The people in Barbados, they have decided, and they've become a republic. The people in Jamaica will no doubt decide, or the government will decide for them, and they will become a republic. And so the rest of the Caribbean countries will probably follow suit. This is not a problem. You've got to separate this from the wider Commonwealth. The Commonwealth will exist. It is a voluntary organization of 54 member states. There are states who never had British Association, Mozambique, Cameroon, Rwanda, Angola has put its, uh, put its hat in the ring, wants to become a member. So let's separate the two. The Commonwealth will continue to exist. Whoever is the head of the Commonwealth, it's not a hereditary title. The Queen has asked the Commonwealth Secretariat and its members, she'd be she would wish for Prince Charles to be its next head. That is going to happen. What happens after that? Well, William made the point. It's not, th it's not his bailiwick. I think it's an important question as to why this is happening now. And I think there are three reasons. One, of course, is we're coming to a point where the succession is being discussed a lot. And the time of the succession was always going to be a time for debate amongst all the Commonwealth realms and about the future of the monarchy. But it's telling also that it is, a, it is a generational issue too. But it's telling that those people who actually lived during the time of the Queen's reign in, in, in um, the 1950s and so forth, they never pushed for a republic. It's telling that India and Pakistan and other countries got rid of the monarchy, but the Caribbean didn't. It's been doing now, and it's a confluence of two different things. Firstly, it's the, the rise of critical race theory. It's the, it's the, the attempt to export George Floyd to Britain and to the Caribbean, where there's no real relevance or connection to, a, to an American situation. But it's also the influence of China. And China is invested so heavily in the Caribbean, in Jamaica most of all, and is using debt diplomacy. It sees the, the Caribbean as a strategic post, very important because of its proximity to America. And it, as Tom Tugendhat, the, the British um, uh, head of the Select Committee, said, it seems as if the Caribbean willingly wants to get rid of a harmless British queen and replace it with an, an aggressive imperial China. And we even had in the Sunday Times an article saying, it's no more little England in the Caribbean, it's little China. And this is an issue which I think they can, the Caribbean sees China as a source of much more money than Britain ever came, gave to it uh, in, the, in recent years. But the problem is, Chi colonialism comes under many guises, and what China is doing is a new form of colonialism. And you know, Britain is one of the world's least racist countries. If you want to find one of the world's most racist countries, you may need to look to China and its attitude towards minorities, including black people. Well, as we've already said, the, the Jamaican Prime Minister, Andrew Holness, has uh, campaigned on a platform of making Jamaica a republic. Um, but here's what people in Jamaica had to say about the British monarchy. It is an insult to us for these young people to be here to try to persuade us to keep the status quo in place when our goal is to loosen and remove the hands, the gloved hands of the Queen from around our necks so that we can breathe. Yearning for liberation, temptation, frustration, desolation. What a situation! Segregation, degradation, persecution. What a tribulation. Because we began our independence economically weak after having been pillaged by the monarchy, who today live on the benefits of that monarchy. Angelina, do you agree that the example set by, by Barbados and now it looks like Jamaica is also making moves to remove the Queen as a head of state. Do you see that as a trend that is going to continue? Um, I, I do. I do see it as a trend. Um, I, just, um, the, I think the idea, um, we have to, personally, I think we need to think a bit more carefully. I mean, the idea of this critical race theory that's been kind of thrown about as something that's really quite dangerous and terrible. And I, I'm, my personal view is that critical race theory is a, is, a, is a methodology, it's a pedagogy, it's not an ideology. It's trying to understand how things work. I mean, the gentleman again alluded that Britain is the least racist country. I would, I would challenge that view. Okay, I would challenge that view based on, on so many things, uh, reports, so many observations uh, uh, that, that demonstrate that there is an issue that we need to explore around racism in Britain. 
But the, uh, to go back to your point about um, whether other countries will follow um, Barbados and possibly Jamaica, I think that they will, because I think that the idea of wanting to seek independence, not just independence from as Britain as uh, former colonies, but uh, you know removing the Queen as head of state, is really about asserting identity that are not just about um, British or French or whatever a region we're talking about, it's about maybe also asserting one sort of African identity. The ones that we are not being taught in schools. People who are living in the Caribbean are the descendants of enslaved African people. And perhaps want to really explore and adhere to more of these identities and understandings about their histories um, prior to being um, uh, captured and enslaved. These ideas of cultural, political, social, these are very important to people. So it's it's very difficult to kind of um, attribute it to just one particular thing. There's lots of things, very complex issues here that we need to consider when we're thinking about why does Jamaica, why does Barbados and possibly other Caribbean, British Caribbean countries are going to make the decision to uh, sever their ties uh, from the British monarchy in the British state? Dickie, this idea of identity of countries like, like Jamaica and Barbados, do you think when William and Kate visited the Caribbean, did they do anything to bolster the, the popularity of the monarchy, to make countries feel that, that their identity was not totally wrapped up in, in, in British colonialism? It wasn't, their, it wasn't their platform to go and sell the monarchy to the Jamaicans, um, it, to sell the monarchy to Belize or, or any of the other Caribbean countries. They were there at the behest of the Queen because Jamaica and the other countries are realm states. It is the Queen's platinum jubilee and they were there representing her. They weren't there to sell the monarchy. Uh, it is for the people to decide as to whether they want to retain the monarchy. They will decide in Jamaica, probably not. But, but I mean, their role in countries like Jamaica is symbolic, isn't it? And, but if that's a symbolism that people no longer want, I mean, we, we heard in the Vox Pops earlier, uh, people saying that they, they felt that they, the monarchy didn't matter to them, that they were still being exploited. Yeah, let's put this into context. They didn't go there because they put their hand up in Kensington Palace say, we would like to go to the Caribbean. They went there because they were invited by the respective governments. If the respective governments didn't want them, then they shouldn't have issued an invitation. And, and Rafe, this uh, idea, I mean, D Dickie says quite rightly um, that there is a, a difference between the, the Commonwealth countries and the there seems to be no suggestion that countries want to stop being part of the Commonwealth, but they do want a different relationship with, with Britain and with the British monarchy. Would you agree with that? Yes, and the monarchy has never, ever stood in the way of any country that sought to go down that path or to have those discussions. And I think that's, that's very important. You know, when, um, you know, it was, it was very telling, again, that after independence came to all of these countries, they freely chose to stay associated through the Commonwealth uh, compare that, for example, to Russia, when the Soviet Union collapsed, Poland, Hungary and the Czech Republic couldn't get out of there fast enough and join NATO and the EU. So, of course, as things evolve, there will be new relationships. But the idea that, you know, the, the monarchy has something to account for, that the monarchy is responsible for something or has responsibility, I think is for the birds. But, it's but very, as Angelina it's very says, the monarchy were in charge of Britain at a time when uh, slavery was hang a on, way hang for... Hang on, the monarchy have never been in charge they haven't been in charge since the reign of Charles I. He got his head chopped off because he interfered with par politics and Parliament. Parliament didn't like that. They chopped his head off and they had no monarchy until 1760. I, I think it's very important. That's a very important point. You know, it, and a, 17, uh, 16, the, 17. The, the, the problem is there's a lot of ignorance that's around here. The British Empire comes in two halves, all right? The first 150 years, slavery was a very real and live and terrible issue. But the British Empire spent the, the last 150 years of its existence atoning for the empire. It was Christian humanitarianism, this evangelical Christianity that shaped and guided so much of what happened in the empire. The Royal Navy expended huge amounts of its resources in forcing an end to the slave trade. Slavery and imperialism are not unique to Britain. They are universal. What is unique to Britain but the, but is that there... Britain was the first country to actually enforce the abolition of the slave trade and enforce it globally. Well, I, I, I think and that, Angelina, I think, needs to be celebrated.
abolition of slavery because of the consistent rebellions and revolts that were happening. They knew that, but they didn't, that they never be, be peace in the Caribbean. Let's, let's, let's play this one. The British had to go into Africa and enforce the abolition of the slave trade. Do you know how many people in Nigeria were actively protesting and opposed to the abolition of the slave trade because it hurt their industry. The slave trade in Africa existed long before Europeans arrived. The slave trade in Africa continued long after, into the 20th century. I, I just want to bring up something that, uh, uh, you know, we, we, we obviously had Prince William speaking about his, his sorrow about the, the, the practice of slavery. But a few years ago, it was interesting, Prince Harry essentially suggested that Britain's colonial past had to be acknowledged for countries to, to move on. Uh, he was speaking in a, a, a video for the Queen's Commonwealth Trust in 2020. At the time, Dickie, Harry was criticised for, for conflating the Commonwealth with the empire, but what he was doing was acknowledging uh, the very real pain that people still feel about Britain's past, which is, which is Angelina's point. It, it, in a sense, yes, actions can be taken and, and uh, responsibility acknowledged, but there is still this very real, um, deep sense of injustice, which is, is clearly what the royal family came across. There, there, there is a deep sense of injustice, but I don't see any, any, any daggers being pointed at Germany, France, Italy, uh, all these countries that had possessions, if I can put it that way, and Belgium uh, on the African continent. They too will swear. And I'm curious to know why there is this... There's no, nothing wrong with the debate but why there is this massive debate on just one part of the world, the, the Caribbean, when quite clearly it was happening all over the African well, continent. Well, I, I think the debate is on the Caribbean because we have we had Barbados and now Jamaica talking about um, parting ways with the British monarchy, possibly the Bahamas might, might follow. So um, last quick question to you, Angelina. Do you think we could see more countries uh, ditching the Queen as their, their head of state and, and trying to put distance between themselves and Britain? Okay, are you, to, are you talking about um, the Caribbean or are you talking about the Commonwealth? Well, there, are, so there, are, there are something like, uh, I think it's 14 Commonwealth countries who currently have the, the Queen as their head of state, I mean, uh, including Australia and, and Canada, where there is a big debate raging about whether that should be the case. Do you think there will be more of a move to remove uh, the Queen as head of state in those countries? I think if there has been actions and activities within those Commonwealth countries to discuss these issues in a way that people kind of think that we've been caught on the back foot here in regards to Jamaica. And I disagree that we've been caught on the back foot. This is, this is a discussion that's been going on for a very, very long time. If these discussions have been happening in, uh, in other Commonwealth countries, then, then yes, we can anticipate uh, other Commonwealth countries wishing to uh, sever their ties. But again, that depends on the strength of the movement in those countries. Angelina, thank you very much. And Dickie and Ray, thank you for joining us here on Roundtable. And remember, you can see more discussion and debates on our YouTube channel. Search for Roundtable TRT World. For now, from me and all the team here, bye-bye and thanks for watching.